If you're familiar with Windows operating systems, you know we don't just have processes, we also have services. Services are things that run in the background that provide essential, well, services to the operating system. And in the case of a Windows server, they also provide services to remote clients. Well, we got kind of the same thing going on in Linux. We have processes, and then we also have, we don't call them services in Linux, we call them daemons. And it's kind of the same thing. It runs in the background and it provides essential services to the operating system or to background clients. So for example, open SSH server is a, um, is a service that we run on our server and it's a daemon. So it provides SSH access for remote clients to be able to access the system. DHCP server would also run as a daemon and it would provide DHCP services and you get the idea. Okay. Now, in Windows, we manage processes through Task Manager, and we use this managed services through the Services Control Panel applet. In Linux, we manage processes using the PS command, or review processes using the PS command. We manage our daemons using systemctl, at least our the, it's a system.d uh, service. It's man or the command we use. See if I can form a proper sentence here. Is systemctl. Now, systemctl breaks things down in units, not necessarily daemons. So I'm going to run systemctl, and this is going to give us our list of units. So you see here a unit, and you look at this first block. You'll see all of these end with dot device. <clears throat> So I'm going to space down, go through this page at a time. So I've got more devices. I have mount points. Now you see why we don't call them daemons. We have lots of different things we're managing here. Now we have services. And then now we have slices, sockets, targets, all managed through system CTL. To get out of it, by the way, we just hit Q. But before I do, I want you to see here, we have 189 units listed. And then do the dash dash all to see all loaded but inactive units as well. I'm just going to quit because we're good with that. We just want to see what all system CTL would allow us to manage. Now that was a lot to go through. So if I want to look for a specific uh, daemon or service, I'm going to use a tool like more friendly tool grep. So I'm going to do system CTL. I'm going to pipe that and I'm going to grep for SSH. And we're going to find right here, there is an SSH.service. And if you look over here, you'll see it's loaded, active, and running. And it's the open BSD secure shell server. Okay. Now, systemctl will show me what's going on. Let's dig into it a little bit more. So I'm going to do systemctl. And this time I want to look for status of SSH. And this is going to give me a more detailed breakdown of it. So here you see our SSH service. It's loaded. And as you look across there, you're going to see it's lib system.d system forward slash ssh.service. You'll see it is enabled. And what we mean by that is when we reboot the system, it's automatically going to start. If you disable a service, it doesn't remove it. It just means it's not automatically going to start. You'll have to manually start it if you want it. And then you'll also see a vendor preset, which is enabled. And what that means is when I install this, the vendor preset is to make this automatically enabled. So when I install it, it will automatically become enabled. If the vendor preset was disabled, then when I installed it, it would default to uh, disabled. Currently, we're active and running, and it gives you the time. In this case, it's been up for an hour and 53 minutes. The documents, the process, the main process ID, tasks, memory, group, and then down here, you'll see some logs. And it's pretty limited. This uh, log entry is going to be a little shortened due to... Um, due to the fact that I haven't done anything with it, honestly. And then it's also going to be a little bit uh, shortened because when we do the status, it'll just show us basically a compressed version of that log. Let's actually add a log entry. So I'm going to connect to the system. So I'm going to SSH to one, whoops, let me get my number lock on here, 127.0.0.1. So I'm just going to loop back an SSH connection. Yes, I want to connect. And my root password... Well, it may not let me log in because my root, yeah, my root account is disabled. So I'm going to break out of that and I'm going to exit. Here we go. Do it as me. Oops, do it as me. SSH 
127.0.0.1.41. Why not? Uh, yes. And login is me. And that account should be enabled in Bingo. I'm in. All right. So I've just SSHN. Now, since I looped an SSH back to myself, you really can't tell that I SSHed in, but that's not really the point. The point is this. I'm going to exit to close out. And then I'm going to do system CTL status SSH. And now you're going to see we have some more log entries here, right? So we had an authentication failure, failed password for root, connection closed. We had an authenticated password. Okay. And this gives us a little bit more of our log. And if we had a longer log, we could view the longer log by doing system CTL status dash L. And that will give us more log entries if we had more to be able to share. All right, not really important. Other than that, I wanted you to be able to see that that status is going to give us the log entries for that particular service. And that becomes, or that particular daemon, and that becomes very, very helpful. Okay, what if I want to stop uh, the SSH service? Also notice, by the way, that when I did the, I'm going to have to go back to my administrative user here for a minute. Also notice when I did the system CTL pipe it to grep SSH, it shows as SSH.service. And I haven't been adding that dot .service to my system CTL commands. I've just done system CTL status SSH. I'm not adding the dot .service, and that's fine. You don't need it. So it, what if I wanted to stop it? Well, that would be system CTL stop. SSH. And now if I look at my status, it's going to tell me it's loaded, which means we've got it in memory. But when we go down to active, it says it's inactive or dead. It's still enabled. So if I reboot, it's automatically going to restart. If I want to manually start it, um, I am going to start SSH. And then let me look at my status and hey, we're up and running again. Now, a couple of other things we have here that you need to be aware of is the, uh, so we start, stop, we have enable and disable, and that's going to enable or disable is going to change this so that it won't automatically start. Enable is going to switch it back. There's two other commands you need to be aware of. One is restart. And that's obviously going to be a stop and start of the SSH service. The other one I want you to be aware of, though, is system CTL reload. Now, that's actually not going to do anything with SSH. I don't think it'll do anything with the open SSH daemon. But what it does is it reloads the configuration. So something like Apache. Uh, let's say you had the Apache web server running and you changed the configuration of the service and you need that new configuration to take effect. Well, if you stop service, it will break all of your active connections. So that becomes a problem. Even a restart is a stop and start. So that's going to break all of your active connections. But what reload does is it reloads your configuration for that service without having to stop and restart. So the service will keep right on running. It'll just load your new configuration. Okay, so that system CTL is what we'll use to manage all these daemons or units. And for our background services or units, that's basically how we're going to control them. System CTL status to display, stop, start, restart, and reload.